So I learned as a young woman working with risk control that if you can't see the risk and you can't teach your machines how to find those patterns, then you really can't do anything about it. So one of the things that our computing systems are, have shown us very clearly, uh, this is University of Wyoming's precipitation map of the US, we know the water is moving toward the east. We know where the bulk of the water is in our United States of America. Why is it there? Of course, it has to do with the topography of the land, but it's also our wind patterns. And so our models are useful because they simplify things, but they're false for the same reason. The model's incompleteness is the reason that we need to improve it. So that water is moving across the geosphere. It's moving in the atmosphere. It's moving through the biosphere. So we have to model all these things all at the same time if we really want to understand what's happening with the water of the United States. Um, as in the summertime, when heat stress cranks up, the rate of evapotranspiration increases, the water gets step taken even more, we irrigate more, that water goes up into the wind and gets blown toward the east. That's the reason that we have this precipitation happening on the eastern part of the United States. NOAA shows us this, like the wind currents carry that water vapor on the wind. To model this and to really understand, we have to look at the soil structure and the microbiome, where that water moves through the soil, how that generates the microbiome, the microbiome breaking that soil pan and allowing that living root to take up even more nutrients. So all these things are interconnected and dynamic and we need huge computing systems to, to model this correctly. So Landsat 9, um, September, 2021, is going to build on all of this work and show us evapotranspiration, um, looking down at our earth. Um, the rates of that, the, the rates of the soil structure change over time and land use change, all of those things are part of a dynamic machine learning model under development. So the biggest takeaway here for workforce development is if we don't get young folks working on this in their young age, we know that half 48% walk away from those STEM degrees because they're not really prepared for that. So if we really want to develop our STEM workforce, which is the ultimate goal of, of solving these problems and having really complete models, is to have lots of brilliant minds working on them. We've got to allow those, those young folks to participate in the data collection so they understand these abstract things. They don't have limited views to only what they see outside.